All right, hey everyone. My name is James Waugh. Thank you. I'm here to explain multidimensional tokenization in less than 10 minutes. It's gonna be super fun. Um, so before we dive into that, just wanted to give a brief overview of one of the practical use cases for this kind of technology. Um, we're creating public organizations with the ERC-888 structure. And what that means, a public organization is just centered around transparent collaboration, which drives progress, uh, you know, coordination around shared goals, relying on that information to be more widely accessible uh, and actionable. Um, and some examples like the, the Department of Energy, the EPA, NYC Planning, uh, all of these rely on, on the same context where they draw imbued value from. Uh, however, they're separate individual organizations uh, with shared goals across uh, these you know, different structures. Um, so without further ado, I want to dive into ERC-888. You see up top, that is the actual structure itself, uh, arrays of address, ID, and value. Uh, and the, the code you see is from the original EIP, which we submitted last year at ETH Denver. Uh, and this is all the code, uh, and it's different from other ERCs you might be familiar with, ERC-20, ERC-721, 998, 1155. These are all standard interfaces, which include custom functions that are shared across wallets and exchanges so that it can be uh, interoperable. Um, however, this is a standard approach to designing tokens. It's a structure, not an interface. So the structure being that first line of code, which I'll blow up now, uh, it's a nested mapping between the address and string. So you have a mapping of the finite address to a mapping of the infinite string data type. So that's just any possible arrangement of characters uh, or symbols. And, and that's mapped to the unsigned integer uh, and that, those are the balances or the values um, within this nested mapping. So you can think of it like a circular hierarchy or a strange loop that once you get started, like on the Mobius strip, uh, you go down this surface and you eventually end up where you started. There's actually only one surface of this unique uh, you know, topological structure here, uh, the Mobius strip, and it's uh, compared to this circular hierarchy which you see in the code uh, between the address and the string. So using that nested mapping, you can get unprecedented capabilities with regard to structuring these kinds of token contracts. Um, namely, the, the efficiency gain is that you can now deploy a contract with many levels of information and functionality. So you don't have to deploy a new contract for, for every non-fungible token. What we're all here trying to do, I hope, is intentional protocol design. I think it gets lost uh, in all the fun stuff, you know, the collectibles and, and stuff like that in gaming and, and that kind of stuff. It's for fun, but it's also for a purpose. We're trying to, you know, flip the script on the world and, and drive outcomes uh, that we're, we're uh, desiring. So if you think about the Stanley Ryder diagram, you've got uh, all these types of users represented by Omega over here. Uh, or theta, I mean, uh, and that's mapped to the, the outcomes x as a result of the social choice functions f of zero, and that's within the, the messaging environment m, uh, or the messages uh, of type m in the game environment g. Um, and just a few questions to think about as I go on. Uh, why do you create, and how can we incentivize positivity together? So a neat idea that goes along with multidimensional token design is the Gestalt principles. And overall, what Gestalt potential means is just that a whole is different from the sum of its parts. It can be greater than or less than, but in effect, you have three things. You have each individual part, you have the sum of those parts, and the whole when you have a Gestalt potential. Um, and you can apply these Gestalt principles from psychology and visual design to actual protocol design. Uh, and you know the examples being Proximity, common fate, continuity, similarity, closure, common region, and symmetry. So if you think about information with these principles, you can design tokens which uh, create more complex structures based on these interactions between information. Um, here's definitely the, the most complex slide. I put it in here for the developers in the room, uh, but the main takeaway from this one is the second line here. Protocols map to dimensions. 
And what that means is basically that you can use this structure and build your own protocol just like you would already. You can write a contract, simply use the nested mapping, and identify your contract, and that's now part of the multidimensional structure, which is a universal protocol that includes every possible arrangement of characters referring to those context-specific rules. And there I get to the, the key point here is it's all about context. What 888 provides is the ability to create contextualized value systems. Uh, and that's really powerful because we all know that protocols might have a value mechanism, but every instance of that value is different um, depending on who's creating it, who's consuming it, and so on. Um, so just to you know, walk through this, create our platform is an infinite playground. It's an experimental platform that we've introduced as the first implementation of the, of the e, uh, ERC-888 uh, structure. So that enables you to create any kind of tokens based on the context that you're, you're minting uh, through. So uh, the modular protocols you're developing act as plugins to that string space we're talking about, the multidimensional structure. Um, and every context may have its infinite set of action dimensions. So you can build your own protocol just like you would already. Uh, you gain interoperability, flexibility, and adaptive uh, or adaptability with the multidimensional structure. We've got two examples of protocols that we've built using this structure as part of the create platform. These are manifolds, uh, the content manifold and the reaction manifold. So you can see how uh, those look. And we've got others as well. I just didn't want to th throw too much at you. Um, but this is definitely the most complex slide. If you're confused by this, don't worry about it. We're learning together here, and I'm looking forward to answering questions uh, both after this talk and, and uh, after the event. Um, so back to the use cases. Uh, generally speaking, I just want you to imagine New York City as a microcosm of the entire world. And the use for multidimensional structure is shown in the, the uh, you know, fractalization of communities within communities. So you have the NYC community overall, but also the parts. So you have the sum of its parts being the boroughs, but NYC is greater than the sum of its parts, ideally. So uh, the use cases for multidimensional tokenization include transparent governance, so you have more accountability with regard to collective action. You can think about project-specific reputation systems, or any context-specific reputation, um, and that's uh, governed or secured through a human-validated proof-of-work algorithm that we've introduced. And curation markets are similar to that. Uh, it's just reducing information asymmetry to, to facilitate coordination around the shared goals, like uh, with quality control. Um, and then finally, universal creativity. It's our a phrase that means universal income. We believe you should represent yourself and earn value from that. Uh, and information is income. Uh, so that's where we're headed. That's kind of the long-term vision. But to get there, we need governance, we need context, and we need integrity. So finally, just the uh, example of create being the amalgamation of all those different use cases. We've got the call to action of populating the value map. If you help us by participating, every action you do while using create is tokenized, which is unprecedented. It's uniquely capable because of the flexible nature of ERC-888 structure. And it enables Gestalt interactions, so you can trade A and B tokens for C, D, and E tokens. Um, and higher dimensional connections are better for liquidity. Just a little conjecture there. Uh, and finally, on create, you can do all sorts of things. Uh, for example, within the create NYC, or create uh, community, uh, there's create Bushwick as an example, and you can add projects, join as a member, create tasks, which are like goals. Um, you can tokenize space and time. Uh, you can even create NFT-like content tokens using 888 structure. Um, and, and finally, validation is the, the most important protocol because it's subjective. It relies on that context uh, to achieve the scalability we're looking for. Um, so thank you. I throw this diagram up just for fun, um, but I really appreciate any questions you have, and hopefully it wasn't too much information. Um, but yeah, thanks.